All right, guys, we're going to take a few minutes here and talk through three pretty simple ways to catch crappie on Lake Shelbyville. So, you know, with the advent of all this technology and forward-facing sonar, um, you know, most of what we see on YouTube now is guys talking about how to go use that technology and pluck fish off of structure, which is great, but it's not always practical. The truth of the matter is a slip bobber, a slip cork, a minnow, a tight-lined minnow, or a jig you know, we'll, we'll catch fish just the same. So what we're going to do today is kind of, kind of answer some of the questions I always get in the boat as a guide about how we rig our stuff. The first thing I would suggest when we're working on a slip bobber rig is to go buy rubber bobber stops, not the fabric ones. The ones made out of thread, they get wet, they slip, you're constantly trimming them. And honestly, they're just not the right tool for the job. To rig these things, um, I've already got one of these on. So it's all, it's up there a couple feet up on the line right now. I don't know if we can see that or not. It's not really important. But then we're going to thread our bobber on. And what I'm about to show you is going to save a ton of headache when you're out in the water. So a slip bobber works by sliding up and down the line. It'll hit the rubber bobber stop at the correct depth because there's a weight and a minnow coming down. So it will come up to where that other bobber stop is, which is actually up on the rod right now. But the thing that's going to save you a whole bunch of headache is use two bobber stops. So I'm going to use one below the bobber and one above the bobber. The reason we're going to use the one below the bobber is that if we do get hung up, which we inevitably will when we're crappie fishing, because we're constantly fishing around structure. And as we say on my boat, if you're not in the wood, you're not any good. So we're going to add this extra bobber stop to the bottom so that when we're going to pretend my hand is a piece of structure, a limb stump whatever and it gets hung up and we're trying to yank that out when it breaks we don't lose our bobber so i know this seems like an overly simple thing but it's one of those things that'll save you just a ton of time and headache so real quick we'll just tie this up and all we're using is a number two light wire aberdeen eagle claw hook any knot you want to tie is honestly just fine And I'm just using a simple fisherman's knot. Just twist, wet my knot, tie that down so it looks real nice and pretty, right there. And I know I'm gonna get yelled at for this, but don't use your teeth. But I just use my teeth. The one thing I won't use my teeth for is a split shot. Now the next question I always get is, where do you put your split shot? Well, I like mine about six inches above where that where that minnow is. Six to ten inches is about right. It is actually important. So. As a, as a crappie comes up out of structure to eat this minnow, if we give him too, too long a tag length, that minnow will end up swimming as he panics and he's trying to get away from the crappie. He'll end up swimming around lim limbs and you get tangled up all the time. This keeps that, keeps that minnow within this radius as he's, as he's swimming around, which is about perfect. Six to 10 inches, that's all you need. Now, as far as the rod goes, any spinning rod will work pretty doggone good, but if you can find a rod, and this isn't anything really fancy, this is one that we keep on the boat specifically for doing this. It has big guides, and why that's important, I can show you guys real quick. Hopefully I stay in the frame. We'll move this bobber stop down. Hold on just a second, guys. There we go. So what's important is that this When we're reeling and we're casting, this bobber stop, if you can see it right here, has plenty of room to get through the guides. Most spinning rods will have very small guides and these things are really difficult to cast. But this rod right here, any of these ones with big, big wire metal eyelets will work pretty good. You can cast really cleanly through that. The cool thing about a slip bobber rig is you can fish this anywhere from 10 inches deep to 20 feet. So this is kind of our, one of our go-to rigs day, a, day in, day out here on Lake Shelbyville. Put that up. Now we'll grab one of my other favorite ways to catch them. This is excellent. This, this presentation we're getting ready to show you is excellent. Um, anytime these fish get out in deeper water and they're suspended on deeper brush piles. You know, we're a flood control reservoir here and our water levels are constantly fluctuating and our fish move season to season. Um, throughout the middle of the summer, anytime that it's hot before we get a thermocline set up, a lot of these fish are gonna end up getting glued to brush piles way out deep. And they're not super active a lot of times. They don't wanna chase a bait real far. So what we'll do is basically doing the same principle we did with a split bobber, 
but we're going to use two size seven split shot a little bit further up a number two aberdeen and i'm using a regular jig rod just like we use this one's a uh, 10 foot 10 foot b m pole and the presentation on this is pretty simple we're going to get over top of deeper brush piles and we're just going to slowly lower that minnow down into those fish and you know, if you don't have live scope or active target or any of the other forward facing sonars, that's fine too. Just go out there and use your 2D sonar or your down imaging and throw a buoy out on top of it and lower your rig down into it and more likely it'll get eaten. All right, so our third and probably everybody's favorite other than casting a cork in the springtime presentation to catch fish and catch crappie day in day out is a jig of your choice jig body of your choice and a long jig rub this can be fished fish shallow on brush this can be fished on our cubes this can be fished on standing trees on stick ups and even open water fish so the uh the things that we use day in day out i probably own a hundred different jig colors that are on this on this boat more than likely you're going to see me use three and I won't tell you all three of them, but black and chartreuse, which is this one's lightning bug by Top Hat Jigs. Um, white and chartreuse, which is the, the color combination is called Teddy Bug on Top Hat Jigs. And I also really like an orange and chartreuse jig during the summertime. It's something that Terry Davis from Field the Thump Guide Service kind of taught me. That's one of his favorites, and now it's one of my favorites on my boat as well. So this rig is pretty simple. And the reason I have this split shot on here is if we're going to fish, if we're going to be fishing with live scope and we're actually using our forward facing sonar, um, this will give me two targets as it falls down through that sonar cone and I'll be able to see the jig much better. And that's really all you need on this lake to catch fish day in, day out.